Father, we bless your name. Thank you for your faithfulness, your mercy, and your truth. We give you praise for your goodness to us in the name of truth. Father, we thank you for this blessed Monday. We give you praise, uh, Father Lord, for the celebration of emancipation in the United States of America. We thank you for Martin Luther King Day. So many are on, on a break today and so many are still working. We give you praise. We still thank you, Lord, for the privilege to come. Father, we exalt your name, O oh God, for the difference this makes, O oh God, in the dynamics of things in the United States. We are grateful for it. And we declare emancipation for every single one of us as we come to this altar this morning. As your people, Father, we consecrate this day to you. Father, we worship you. We give you praise. We lift up the United States of America as a nation before you. United States of America, we worship the Lord. Let's say a word of blessing for United States of America. Azila Kitali Abazine Kitalia. United States of America, you will not take liberty for license. United States of America, you will fulfill the mandate of God. United States of America, you will be the succor for the church, the eagle that protects the church, the bride, the woman. Azima In Revelation chapter 12. United States of America, you will take your place. Ada Basile Kitalia. As God's ego, this end time, United States of America, you will not fill the heavenly mandates. Come on, pray for United States of America. Father, we exalt your name. We give you praise for the privilege to be the intercessors in nations. Thank you, Almighty Father. We worship you. We bless your name. Zamba Bazunekita. In Jesus' mighty name. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord, Zamazuna Kayaba. You are worthy, Lord, Samayikutuliamba. Magnificent God, you are faithful, Lord. You are faithful, Lord. You are faithful, Lord. You are faithful, Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul unto thee, O Lord? Do I lift up my soul, O my God? I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Azamakota ye gadeli abazilikete. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of the Lord, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole world. Is Monsan on the side of the north, the city of the great king? Is Monsan on the side of the north, the city of the great king? Grace are you, Lord, worthy to be praised, worthy to be praised. Master, you reign. Great are you, Lord, worthy to be praised. Praise, worthy to be praised, Master, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Come and worship Him. He's worthy. Great are you, Lord. Hey, Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. Come and worship Him. He's worthy. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Come and worship the Lord. 
We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, my God. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are beautiful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are beautiful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are marvelous. You are magnificent, Lord. You are marvelous. You are magnificent, Lord. Father, we give you praise. Our heart is glad. We are so grateful for your faithfulness, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of the Spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, I'm praising my Savior, all the day long this is my story this is my song my song praising my savior all the day long perfect submission perfect delight visions of rapture now burst on my side Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness. I'm lost in his love. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day long is Amazon Talia Baba. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Araba Baba. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are powerful. You are worthy, my God. You are powerful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. 
Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome to Neymantra Prayer Ministry. Monday morning prayer and righteous decree. Welcome to a new beginning. Welcome to a new season. Welcome to a supernatural encounter that will leave you forever transformed. Welcome to your day. Welcome to your best year. May you rise out of seclusion in Jesus' name. May you operate with prominence as we give God preeminence in the mighty name of Jesus. May you walk into prominence as we give God preeminence this season in the name of Jesus. Remember, we just crossed over into a new year. So many people have forgotten that we're in a new year. The Almighty God gave us a new beginning. He pressed the start button when we crossed over from December 1 to December to January 1st. So you have an opportunity to do it again and now to do it better, to do it with understanding. Remember that this month is our month of prophetic newness, where we are taking out the old to bring in the new. And we are doing something very significant this morning. We are taking our old oil. So all your old anointing oil, the stale ones, the smelly ones, the ones that when they say, Put it on your tongue. You know that you cannot, t- it doesn't taste right. You need to bring that old oil because we are taking it out and we are doing something significant. We are bringing in the new. We were giving instruction last week, actually during our marriage war room to get new bottle of oil. But God gave us an opportunity to redeem even for those who have brought it on Friday morning. And now we are doing it on Monday morning. And we have an instruction for seven days to anoint ourselves daily. And I'll be giving you the instruction as we go along. So get your new oil, get the old oil. I have both of mine here. So the new oil, I will tell you what you will do with it. And the old oil, I will also tell you what to do with it. And I hope you have your old oil and your new oil because we are going to do something very significant. The Bible says that we will bring out the old to take in the new. The Lord is making all things new. And that's why we have come into this month of prophetic newness. And we're not just going to fold our hands and watch the month go by. We are going to prophesy daily the things we want to see. Have you written your 24 memorial stone? Because you are going to activate your oil with those 24 memorial stones. Please do not ignore prophetic instruction because you will have testimonies, tangible testimonies to back it up in the name of Jesus. And do not recline to your old ways of doing things. Make sure you follow the instructions crucial for your destiny. Please do not procrastinate or put off your heavenly vision. Amen. Grab your anointing oil, your bottle of oil. Grab it if you have not already done so, as we'll be praying over it, as we'll be blessing it and activating it in the time of prophetic activation. This morning, our topic is oil of prominence, activated through the law of preeminence. The oil of prominence is activated through the law of preeminence. We must operate the law of preeminence as recorded in Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, what things? All the things that the Gentiles are looking for, all the things that the world are running after, he said they will be added to you as you do what? As you practice the law of preeminence. One of the ways to gain access to prominence is to give God first place. So when you are practicing the law of preeminence, you are actually saying, God, take the first. You are the first in everything. And it must not just be by word of mouth. You must back it up with tangible action. And I will show you an ordinance from the scripture. Remember, the Old Testament is not to be ignored. The Old Testament is actually a picture, a shadow, a type of the things that we must do in the New Testament. It's just a shadow. So when you see them offering incense in the Old Testament, it's actually showing prayer. When you see them doing that, it's actually, when you see all of the things that we see, the precept precept of tithing, tithing does not just refer to, you know, our money. It's tithing our day, tithing our month, tithing our year. So how are you doing with that? The Bible says, oh no, the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of all your increase, including your day. You did not spare yourself, he did, he kept you. So one of the ways to gain access to prominence, to be first among our equals, is to give God first place in everything we do. January is the first month of the year. We must give God absolute preeminence in it. We must seek for the kingdom of God in it. We must give him the glory that belongs to him alone in the month of January. 2023 is also our year of divine intelligence. God wants us to operate with vision and precision this year. There will be no hits and misses by God's grace. It will be with perpetual accuracy that we work this year in all that we do. We operate by divine this instruction that leads to divine uh, precision, divine instruction that leads to divine precision. Hence the word divine intelligence. We are operating by divine intel. We were told to write down our vision for 2023. Have you obeyed the 
heavenly vision? Have you obeyed the instruction? 24 memorial stone as we read from the book of Joshua chapter 4. Go and read it in case you did not join us for the end of year fast. The end of year fast is actually our spiritual emphasis, our spiritual focus, our spiritual preparation for the new year. We are not just doing it to follow the trend. We are not just doing it to follow the world. That is what God has given us a precept to have obeyed since 2013 in this ministry and we never miss it. In the middle of the year, we also go back to re-examine our vision and reactivate for the rest of the year. And that's why we fast in December and we fast in the seventh month of the year. It's an ordinance from scripture that I do not have time to break down this morning, but we are not just following trend. Everybody else is doing it. Not We are not doing it because everybody else is doing it. We are doing it because God instructed us to do it in this ministry. And so have you written your 24 memorial stone? Speaking of the vision for the year, what is the vision that you have for this year? Have you written it out? Have you spelled it out? The Bible says, write the vision. It says so that he that reads it may run with it. It will help you to run. It will help you to stay focused and disciplined. Many are seeking preeminence in life, but the truth is that preeminence comes as a result of exalting God as first in all that we do, including our life vision. The reason why many live in frustration is because they did not put the Lord in the first place. They did not put the Lord first in everything that they do, especially in their vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no godly vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision. We are not talking about ambition here. We're not talking about, you know, goals here. We're talking about heavenly vision, where we align ourselves to God's mandate for our life, the heavenly instruction for the year, just like Joshua did, and he became a champion, an executor and possessor of the, uh, of the everlasting covenant. How do you get vision? You must ask the Lord. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I keep telling you, write visions, write big things. <laughs> because <laughs> if you write the visions that are common, the things that you can accomplish by yourself, then it's not the heavenly vision. But when you write a heavenly vision, things that will make your heart leap for, you know, leap for joy and not for fear. Things that will make your heart excited and say, Lord, only you can bring this to pass. Things that will bring you to your knees in you before God, when you write them and when you see them come to pass. You must position yourself on the word tower of prayer. The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, he said, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablet that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, at the end of the year, your memorial stones will speak. At the end of the year, your tangible testimonies will show. At the end of the year, you will have evidence. You will rejoice and sing. At the end of the year, you will carry your baby. At the end of the year, you will have a ring on that finger. At the end of the year, you will have a testimony of a clean bill of health, despite the report of the doctor. He said, write the vision, make it plain. At the end of the year, you will have testimonies of promotion and exaltation instead of cluelessness and joblessness. At the end of the yeah, you will record millions in profits in the name of Jesus. He said, do it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So the Bible says, write the vision, spell it out so that you can run with it. Does your vision align with heavenly mandate? Does your vision align with kingdom vision? Does it glorify God? Does it put God first over everything? Or is it centered around your personal agenda, your personal achievement, and your selfish desires? Or has it got to do with the kingdom, the mandate, and what God wants to do on planet Earth? Have you written down your vision for this year? The purpose of writing the vision is clear from scripture so that we can run with the vision. There's no point writing if you not pursue the vision. It will just be another religious routine that you have imbibed. But the truth is that we need grace to run. You cannot do it by mental assent or sheer will. We need divine assistance to run with our mandate. We need supernatural strength to run. We need spiritual focus to run. The reason why many goals are failed in the past is simply because they were ambitions and not visions. A vision is given by God. And every time you see a heavenly vision, you will see heavenly provision. You will see heavenly supply. You will see angelic supply. You will see the supplies of the spirit because provision backs up heavenly vision. God will not sponsor an ambition. God will only sponsor his heavenly vision. So what is driving those 24 memorial stones you write, you wrote down? Is it your self-centered ambition or is it God-centered vision? As a ministry, our mandate this year is to equip God's holy remnant and prepare the wise virgin for the return of the bridegroom. It is to raise consecrated kings and priests 
unto our God. Our vision is to preach the undiluted gospel of the kingdom through whatever platform is available to us. We must disciple kingdom priests who will usher in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we must give this kingdom mandate utmost preeminence. Every program we do here is to glorify Jesus. Every program we do here is to edify the body. Every program we do on this altar is to bring the will of God to pass on the earth, to make Jesus known to the world. What is your own heavenly vision? What is your own heavenly mandate? Now, the law of preeminence, what does it mean to be preeminent? Before all others, surpassing others, superior, excellent, great, eminent, foremost, supreme mercy, chief, outstanding, leading, important, top. And so many of us want to be superior in our performance. Many of us want to be the chief among our equals. We want to be outstanding in all that we do. We want our children to be leading in their, among their peers. We want to be the top achievers, high achievers in our field of endeavor. We want to be excellent and great and eminent. But you know what? It doesn't come from our own desire. It comes from following the law of preeminence. So we have come to activate the anointing of excellence today, the anointing of distinction today, the anointing of, <laughs> the anointing of prominence, not because we want to be famous, mm -mm, but because we want to make Jesus famous by putting his kingdom first. Mm. Our God surpasses all others. He's the chief of all spirit beings. The foremost being is the supreme one. He's the God of all. His ways are higher than the highest and is greater than the greatest. There is none like him, none beside him. He stands alone among all the gods of the world. He rules with preeminence and without controversy. He is God. He's superior to all. He created all things. Is the possessor of all things. Is the king of kings. His throne is the highest throne in all the heaven. Is the only wise judge. His court is the highest court. Is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of all, the captain of the armies. His altar is the highest altar, and there is no god like him. He does not need anyone to be god. He has the final say. So why do we give him leftover? We give him leftover time. Most people don't pray in the morning. Most people even forget until they are in trouble, and then we give him our leftover, our shabby hours leftover hours of the day. You must give God the first fruit of your day. That's why in Neymar we wake up at the hour of incense at 6 a.m. to come and pray to God. And we offer him a sacrifice of praise in our praying intensely in the spirit. The Bible said we don't know how to pray as we hope. The spirit helps our infirmity. We come to say, Lord, we have come. We have come again. <laughs> Father, we have come again. Emmanuel, come and take control. That's what we are doing every morning. Come and take your place, oh God, in our lives. Come and take your place on this altar. Come and take your place. We're saying, take the first place, Lord. Take the first place. Every time I see another breaking of the day, I say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are saying, Lord, we have come. We have come to give you the first fruit of our day. Every time you open your mouth to praise him intentionally and to pray intently in the morning, you are saying, Lord, I give you preeminence of my day. The same thing when we come at the cross overnight, you see that we always come at the precipice of the midnight hour as we cross into the new day because we want to give him the first fruit of our month. The same thing when we do the crossover into the new year, the what night service, you see that we come at the precipice of the year, the old year ending over to the new one. And we're saying, Lord, the first day of this year, we start it in your presence. It is not just an emblem. It's not just a routine to fulfill. It is actually the law of preeminence, giving him first place in everything, not giving him leftover or whatever time we have, but giving him quality time, first time, <laughs> is a precept of scripture. We claim to love him, but only with our lips. Matthew 15, 8 says, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. May that not be your portion on this altar in Jesus' name. That will never be our portion in the immature because we have intentionally and intently, consciously devised ways to give God first place in our life. Every time. We treat God with contempt, but expect him to treat us with utmost care. Many people honor their bosses more than they honor God. A lot of believers give more attention to social media and other media altars first thing in the morning before they call unto God. But when they cry, they expect everyone to stand still. How do you feel when you are in someone's presence 
and they are constantly on their phone or computer surfing the web and ignoring you or texting someone else. Many of us treat Lord, the Lord worse than that. <laughs> but on the day of trouble, we are expecting to shake heaven and earth on our behalf. Every covenant relationship should be, should be a two-way street. Honor begets honor. It should be a mutual thing. You want God to rise up for you. Remember, we quote the scripture as the very present up in the time of trouble. But in the days, in the other days of the year where you have enjoyed his peace, his mercy, his graciousness and provision, have you taken time to give him preeminence? Have you taken time to honor him with glory? He will put you first if you put him first. He will promote you if you promote him. If you promote his kingdom here on earth, he will empower you financially if you also empower his mission here on the earth. Many people have been called out and tested for kingdom wealth, like Abraham. Go and read Genesis 22 in case you don't know it. He was tested with the best thing, the thing he loved the most. God said, give me Isaac, your son, the one whom you love, in case he wants to mistake it for Ishmael. <laughs> he said, give me that son that you love, the son of your heart. And he gave him that. And God said, look, Abraham, in case you don't know it, <laughs> even if you don't want to be rich, even if you don't want to be blessed, God swore by his own sovereignty and his power. He swore by no other name because his name is the greatest and the highest, the preeminent one, the prominent one, the only wise God. He said, look, I will bless you. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Many of us claim, Abraham's blessings are mine. <laughs> Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I'm blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. But are you ready to do what Abraham did? We we'll see the precept that God gave to Abraham and his seed, the law of first fruits, the law of preeminence. Many don't like to give God their money, but they want all of God's money. <laughs> we always cry, bless me, bless me, my name is blessing. But when heaven calls for our seed, most turn a deaf ear. If he's the Lord of your life, then you must learn to give him first worship. You must honor him with the first fruit of all. That's what the Bible says. Not only the first of your increase, but the first of everything you are and everything you have. He gave it to you in the first place. In fact, in the course of the month, as God permits, I will teach you about the firstborn blessing. In the scriptures, God asked for the firstborn of everything, including human and animals. So who told you that you will not give me first fruit of your increase? Because of the advent of grace messages, we have concluded that the Old Testament is obsolete. Jesus Christ said, I did not come to make it obsolete. I came actually to fulfill it. You must honor the Lord with the first. If you see any first one who is not consecrated to God, you will see their life is fraught with challenges and all kinds of things. They derail. I can give you several examples around me and from scriptures. But when a firstborn, the first fruit of the womb is dedicated to God, you will see that path operating in righteousness, like Samuel, like Abraham, like Jesus. Those are the examples of the right firstborn. But when you see a firstborn who deviates from covenant, you will see their life is filled with hardship. Because God knows the blessing of the firstborn is in Christ Jesus. Jesus is a picture of the firstborn blessing, the first fruit of the Spirit. And so the enemy attacks the firstborn because of this. I'm not going to derail from my teaching this morning because of time. But I want you to understand the firstborn, first fruit is a precept of scriptures. You need to be intentional about your worship. You need to be intentional about your praise. You must be intentional about your service. And you must also be intentional about your giving. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Job 36, 11 say, if they obey and serve me, <laughs> they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasures. Many of us want to enjoy prosperity and pleasure, but are you ready to obey? He said, but if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. None of us will die without knowledge. The Bible said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You will not perish from ignorance in Jesus' name. Serving God with preeminence will guarantee your lifting. There's a secret of divine preeminence. When you serve God as an individual, a family or a nation, any nation that put God first, they excel. One of the secrets of South Korea is because they put God first. In the time of um, um, Watchmani, in the time of, um, what's the name of this uh, great, uh, Yonggi Cho, Paul Yonggi Cho, Korea flourished, prospered. 
their GDP, their GNP. You can go and read the history tells it all. When a nation puts God first, they excel gloriously. But when a nation deviates from that first fruit of worship, then that nation will begin to struggle and lose power and glory. An example is Great Britain. In fact, they don't even put great in front of the Britain anymore. They just say Britain. Because that nation lost its focus from God to become a deviant. Psalm 25 verse 12 says, Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach the way that he shall choose. He himself will dwell in prosperity and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. The secret of the Lord is being shown to Nehemiah through today. And he will show them his covenant. Honoring and putting God first over everything else in your life will deliver untold blessing to you. The Bible says in Job 22, 21, now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Good will come to you. Receive instruction from his mouth lay, and lay it up in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you'll be built up. You'll remove iniquity far from your tent. Then you will lay up gold as the dust. Many people want to lay up gold as the dust, but have you obeyed the last instruction? He said, you will lay up gold as the dust and the gold of offer among the stones of the book. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. And you will have your delight in the Almighty. And you will lift up your face to God. You will make your prayer to him and he'll hear you. And you'll pay your vows. And you also declare a thing, it shall be established. We love to quote that scripture. Paul, Job 22, 37, we declare a thing and it shall be established. <laughs> Verse 29, when men are cast out, we say there's a lifting up. But have you followed this precept? Have you obeyed his instruction? Have you acquainted yourself with his ways? Have you operated by his secret? The secret he shows to those who love him. The law of preeminence is what releases the oil of prominence. When you honor the Lord with the first fruit of everything in your life, it will become evident to all around you that you stand out just like the house of Abraham, just like the house of Jacob, just like the house of Joseph. The first fruit is not limited to money alone, but it can be expressed with monetary increase. Proverbs 3 9 says, Honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of all your increase. You want to enjoy prominence in wealth this year? Then don't play with the first fruits of your increase. It's just simple. I always say, if you want to reap money, don't sow prayer. When you sow prayer, you will get power. When you sow fasting, when you fast a lot, you will have revelation. Every will open, you will see vision like Elijah and Elisha, but money won't drop. But when you want to see monetary increase, because the law of first mentioned in the book of Genesis said that every tree bearing fruit according to its kind, you want to sow money, you want to reap money, sorry, you want to reap increase, then you sow money. You cannot sow beans and be reaping yam. Mm -mm. So I'm teaching a secret today. You want to experience kingdom wealth, handle tangible wealth, real estate wealth, then you sow money. If you want to operate with increase financially, then you sow money. But the church does not want to talk about money. It's a touchy topic. When the pastor mentions it, the church gets offended. Why are they taking my money? But you want God's money. What an aberration. That's why the Bible said these people love me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. It's like, God, give me your money, but my own money is sealed. And that's the reason why many have not increased in place of financial or kingdom wealth. Hallelujah. The law of preeminence is all encompassing. It is honoring God with the first fruit of everything. Everything, including your time, your worship, your prayer, your children, your increase, your days. I've explained this. So you must say, Neymar to be asking for our money. If you like, don't give. Some of us have already given our first fruits. Every year, I don't miss it. The first money that comes, it goes to him. And he's been working for my family. He secured so many things for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood shed on the cross of Calvary. But there are some precepts you must operate to break through. This is newness, prophetic newness. We must operate by prophetic instruction. The first fruit of everything, including your money, Neymar Troop, your increase, your hour, your everything. You must be intentional about getting the first fruit of each day as long as you dwell on this side of eternity. Give him the first. As much as your schedule permits, make sure you get the first fruit of your night as well. Midnight hour. If you can wake up at midnight, it's a good thing. Praise him. Worship him. 30 minutes, go back to sleep. Ask him for sleep. He said he gives his beloved sweet sleep. In fact, it is vain to wake up early and go to bed late. For the Lord gives his beloved sweet sleep. That's Psalm 127. Ask him for sweet sleep. He will give it to you. Like a, I, When I sleep, I sleep. People are pitying me. They're like, you don't sleep. I say, ah, you'll be so, I sleep. Oh. 
But you know what? I'm an intercessor, so I understand what I must do at the midnight watch, at the early watch. Me, I'm a full-time intercessor. You, maybe you have different call, but you must also learn to give him first fruit of your day and your nights. You must teach this precept to your children. They must learn to give God first of everything. First of everything in your life belongs to God. You must not just do these things as a religious ritual. Remember, everybody is doing it. No, we are operating by scriptures. You must operate this spiritual principle with understanding. And that's why we honor the Lord with the first fruit of everything in Nehemiah. We see God face in prayer every first hour of the day. Same with the first few hours of the month. Same with the first day of the week. That's why we come here. We go to church on Sunday. First day of the week, the Lord must also be the, fourth, the, the Lord of the Sabbath. In order to honor the Lord, make sure you honor him with the first of everything, every single thing. Now, I'm going to touch on something. It's very touchy, but it's only for those who, are, who have ears. The Bible says, let him that have ears. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. For verse 3, 9. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. In case you are in doubt, Amplified Version says, honor the Lord with your wealth. <laughs> with your wealth. And with the first fruit of all your crops, and in parentheses, income. If you are not a farmer, why will you be giving God corn? But if you earn, since your employer does not pay you with sorghum and beans and goats, they pay you with money, huh? Then you come and give God the first fruit of that money. Because it was the one that gave you life, stamina, strength, intelligence, skill, education expertise, and I can go on and on and on. So when you bring the tithe or the first fruit, you're saying, Lord, I give you first of this. Uncle Sam does not take your permission before removing 25 to 40% of your tax. Typically, the first fruit in scripture is the first yield of crops in Israel, and it belongs to the Lord. Since we are not farmers, we are not all farmers because there are some farmers amongst us. The first fruit is whatever income you procure, whether as a capital gain, as your wages or salary. I remember one time I went to minister in, in, in England and, and I got an envelope. I was so excited. I was like, oh God, I will get a break for all the money I spent coming, you know. And I was excited about the check. And the Lord said, it's your first fruit. It's your first seed this year from minister. I said, oh, thank you. I did not argue immediately. I put it down. And guess what? He replenished me beautifully after that. Are you ready to give God the first? When he demands for it, are you ready? Or you are going to pretend you didn't hear? The first of everything belongs to God. For example, whenever you get a new job, I remember one time we're so strapped for cash. In fact, our bills were waiting to be paid. And my husband just got a new job after a few months of being unemployed. As soon as the money came, I said, ah, how should we do this first fruit? He said, let's give it up. Please, I don't want any contest. Just give it up because we know how it works for us. I'm not saying you should do the same. We are just following scriptures. We put the lump sum and our needs were met. We don't know. People were coming to our house for house fellowship. They did not know that we had no income. And God protected, kept us beautifully throughout that time. The law of first fruit. And we were able to use this to ask God, well, Lord, we give you first fruit of this one. Remember your covenant. And he does remember covenant. God owes no man. <laughs> the example I'm giving is the first fruit of a new job. The first salary belongs to God. The first pay from that job belongs to God. He gave it to you. If you started a business, the first sale, or if it's a lump sum, like maybe a big car or a house, then take the profits, the first profits. Because if you leave the capital, then you have nothing to wrong with your business. God is not the tax master. There's wisdom to do these things. The first profit from that business or the capital gain. So you can reinvest your, your capital. The gain is what you give to God. It belongs to God. If the lump sum may affect the daily running of your business, then take out the profit as your first fruit. If your total paycheck will affect your bills, then split the first fruit into two. Pay it twice so that you can attend to your bills. Our God is not a taskmaster. If you have the reserve to draw from, then you can give the lump sum. We have practiced this as an ordinance for years in the Imam group, and personally as a family, it has brought unlimited blessing and guaranteed the flow of heavenly supplies. For many years, when I had no income, 
I'll give something representative of the year. For example, the year 2023. I encourage you to give an amount that is representative of the year in case you don't have a, a, a particular salary. Please don't be pressured to do anything or uh, out of compulsion, please. Go before the Lord, seek his face. For example, it can be $20.23. And I'll give a testimony before we pray. I'm sure you're like, time is going. When are we going to do the anointing? Set? We will do it. Because today we must deal with this matter as we do our anointing of prominence. We want to be first among our equals, then we must understand the precept. The Lord knows your size. If your size is $20, give it. If your size is $200, $223, give it. If your size is $2,023, give it. Give the size according to your size. Or if you have a stipulated salary, then that salary, the first check that they write to you, whether it's $200 or $2,000, it belongs to the Lord. Now, it's between you and God. For example, when I got my own first check, what I did is I split it and I gave the first fruit. And then I know when my second check comes, Give the second so I can pay my bills. The same with my husband. That is how you're supposed to do it. Or if you have a reserve to draw from, then you pay the lump sum. God honors it. I tell you, you can try it. If it does not work, come back and tell me that that thing you taught us is not working for you. I have not seen it fail. I remember the testimony of one of our ministers here in Neymato who was unemployed for years, but gave a seed of 20 dollars and 17 cents in 2017. It almost closed the account. But by May of that year, she got a job. And the first fruit of that salary was about $1,996. I may have to go back to our account to check exactly how much it was. You know the interesting thing? When we added up the $20 and 17 cents with the $1,900 plus change, it added to $2,017. Our God is a mathematician. And I love that kind of math. It was shocking to realize it added up to exactly 2017. So God saw the picture of her heart, the size of her pocket when she gave $20 and 17 cents. And at the middle of the year, when she gave her two, 1,900 and something else, she didn't hold anything back because she vowed it. It added to $2,017. And she has not lacked since then. You think God is not a keeper of covenant? And I can go on and on with so many testimonies, both personal and corporate, as we've experienced and provoked heavenly, heavenly covenant because of the first fruit ordinance. Every month of the year, we yield its increase to you as we practice this ordinance in the Imatru. Our biggest emphasis this month this morning is to get our vision aligned with the heavenly mandate. Make sure that you are aligned and make sure that you give God preeminence in everything. From today, you will not go astray. You will not operate trial by error. I say you will not operate hit and miss. You will operate with precision that leads to divine intelligence. Remember our theme for this year is from Isaiah 48 verse 17, where the Lord said he will lead us into profit and he will show us, he will teach us the way to go. When God said he will lead you to profit, believe me, you can take it to the bank. He led Joseph to profit as the prime minister of Egypt. He led Jacob to profit when Laban was cheating him. And his head multiplied rapidly because God was with him. Do you know God is with us? God blessed Abraham with silver and gold. He caused the things that should have destroyed him to increase him. That's how our God does. Now, what do you say about 2023? You must prophesy it. You must proclaim it. You must speak it to it. And that's why this morning, we are going to be speaking into our oil. Open your bottles of oil. As we pray, those prayers, they sink into the oil. They activate our oil. I have my own brand new. I'm opening my oil now. Open your oil as we begin to pray. And now I want to say something. If you are not born again, you are just going to be pouring grease on your head. You must be born again for this covenant of preeminence and the, the covenant of oil to speak in your life. You must be born again. And that's the reason why this morning I'm going to make an altar call before we pray. This oil is so powerful that it will restore stolen blessings to you. 
blessings stolen from your ancestors, from your father's or from your mother's or, will be restored to you at the activation of this oil. Back pay, forgotten checks will be sent to you in the mail. Your name will come up in the palaces of kings. That yoke or burden you have been bearing, pushing you down, that did not allow you to move forward. I declare that because of this anointing oil, it will break off you. The yoke of poverty. I remember when God broke the yoke of poverty from my life. The yoke of poverty. Poverty has a stench. Poverty has a look. <laughs> I'm telling you, but this oil can turn a pauper to a prime minister. It can turn a, 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 a prisoner to a president. This one can turn a slave to a queen. This oil. This oil can make an infirmed person, a sick and invalid person, into a healer. It can transform your shadow to raise the dead. That is the power in this oil. From today, because of the law of preeminence that you operate, this oil of prominence will speak for you. The world will take note of you. Your gift, your talent, your divine ability will be noted. I said that you will increase in capacity. You will be recommended for greatness. You will stand before kings by reason of this anointing. We have a special instruction today and I will go by it as we pray. In the next seven days, you are going to be anointing yourself daily, proclaiming your memorial stone and the scriptures. You are going to back every memorial stone with at least one scripture. If you get many scriptures, put it there. Begin to enforce it because you just writing words on paper does not mean anything. But when you put the word of God there, he said in, in Psalm 119, verse 89, go and check it out. He said, forever, oh God, your word is settled. You want to settle your memorial stone. You want to see it come to pass. Put the word of God there. Why? Hebrews 4, 12 says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Let me tell you, brethren, the word of God works. So if you take your memorial stone and you begin to decree the word of God into it, let me tell you, your destiny will be activated. Your marriage will work. You will excel in your present assignments. Your increase will be evident. Your career, your ministry, your calling in life will blossom. Your children will prosper. Because the word of God says so. And it's not going to prosper just because you open your mouth and say so. It's going to prosper because the word of God in your mouth becomes a double-edged sword. Your own mouth, your word is one, your word is one edge of the sword. Then the word of God is the second edge of the sword. And it will not miss its target. Today is the first of the seven days as we proclaim the word of God into the anointing. You will anoint yourself, your spouse, and your children, and all those in your house. You will consecrate all that you have with it. Your car, your house, your table, your chair, your workplace, everything as God lays in your heart. Anoint everything. And then you will see how the blessing of the Lord will blossom. Now I said earlier, it, this oil is only potent in the hand of the redeemed. If you are not saved, you will just be carrying a bottle of grease. But if you are saved, it will become extraordinary power. It will become the fire, the liquid fire in a bottle. Because this was the same power that Jesus Christ gave to his disciples to go do signs in Luke 9 and Luke 10. And the Bible said that the demons obeyed them. They trembled because of this anointing. And so this morning, if you are not saved, I want you to say this simple prayer. Believe it that Jesus Christ is Lord in your heart. Because the Bible says, with the heart man believes. And with the man, confession is made unto salvation. You believe unto righteousness and confession is made. At the instance of your confession, you are born again. A miracle happens that translates you from darkness into light. And makes you a commander of the inheritance of God. If you like to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, say this simple prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you. I come to you today. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Now I know and I declare I am born again to serve the living God. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. It's a new beginning for you, a new day. Please make sure you find yourself in a Bible-believing church where the precepts of God are being taught and look for foundational material that will establish you as a believer in the kingdom. In the coming weeks, we are going to announce our Believers Foundation School in the Imatru Prayer Ministry, where we'll be teaching you the precept. Please do not miss it. Look out for that announcement. And if you have a loved one who just gave their life to Christ, please make sure you follow up with them and make sure they are registered for that class as we kick it off this year in Jesus' name. Now it's time for us to pray. I beg of you this morning, we'll take a little bit of time. Remember the first 20 minutes we are praying in tongues. The remaining the first 15 minutes we are praying into, and then the remaining 45 minutes is supposed to be for our prayer and our teaching. But today, because we have a special 
anointing service is going to flip above seven o'clock. So please, it's already past seven. Please bear with me. We'll be done in the next 20 minutes by God's grace. If you are somewhere to be, please go and come back and catch up with the recording at a later time. I declare that the same anointing and auction present with us shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Now let's pray. Let's give thanks to God for the privilege to come. Say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for the privilege of starting this year right in your presence. Thank you for the grace to walk with you in 2023. Thank you for showing me the secret of preeminence. Thank you for the mystery of first fruit revealed to me on this altar. I receive the grace to follow, to follow the precept and to always put you first. I receive the grace to put you first. Give me the grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Give me the grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me the grace to obey. Abundant grace to obey. Give me the grace to obey. Your grace is enough for me. Thank you, Lord, for the law of preeminence. Thank you for showing me the secret of prominence on this altar. Thank you for the mystery of the first fruit revealed on this altar. I receive the grace to always put you first. Thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy towards me and towards my entire family in the past year. I'm grateful for the privilege to see this new year and I thank you for the great things set aside for this year, the exploit of this year. I am so grateful. Daddy, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. I am grateful. Oh Lord, hey, I am grateful, Daddy, for all you are set to do in the Emaya truth. I am grateful, oh Lord. I worship you as the foremost being and the only God in heaven and earth. I honor you with the highest praise in all the earth. I declare you the biggest, greatest, holiest, highest God. I love you, Lord. Magnify him in your words. Tell him that he's great. Lord, I give you preeminence. Lord, I give you preeminence. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. You are Lord. I bet you look Arabia Jere. I got the legate gate. I walk and be redija. I shiwa jogula lo. I can yogula bo. I bless your name, Sulekita Liaba Zulekita. I worship you, O God. I give you preeminence. I bless your holy name. You are wonderful. You are kind and you are lovely. The Bible said it's altogether lovely. Hey, Zami Katelia, my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands of thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands of thousands. Yes, Yes, My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands of thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands of thousands. Oh, Father, we bless your name. We give you praise, we magnify you, we bless your name, we say you are God, you are beautiful, you are lovely, you are magnificent, you are good, and you are kind. Take all the praise and glory. I want you to pray and say, Lord, forgive my years of ignorance. I'm sure many of us, the skills are falling off us and say, ah, now I get it. Forgive my years of ignorance in every way I've lightly esteemed you, Lord. I choose to honor you above all else from today. According to your word in Matthew 6, 33, that says, seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. The Bible said in Proverbs 3, 9, honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of all your increase. I honor you with my worship. Some of us I will struggle with tithing, not to talk of offering, not to talk of lay it all. Ha! Is in levels. Ask the Lord to meet you at your level and say, Lord, give me grace to honor you with my substance and the first fruit of all my increase. Give me grace to honor you. <laughs> give me grace to honor you. Many of us want to become millionaires. 
But we, we, we are not ready to play uh, uh, with, with our money, with God. We don't want to play. <laughs> I want you to pray and say, Father, Lord, give me the grace to honor you with my worship. I honor you with the first foot of my day. I honor you the first foot of my week. The first day of the week, I use it to honor you. I will worship you. I will go to church. I will take my children to church. <laughs> I will honor you. I will honor you. I will honor you with the first day. The Bible says we should not neglect the fellowship of one another. I don't have time to teach about that today, but you must honor. You must be intentional. If whether you like the pastor or not, you must be intentional. I'm not saying you should go to a church where you are being abused, but make sure that you plug in into a church. <laughs> I honor you with the first fruit of my day. I honor you with the first fruit of my week. I honor you with the first of e first day of every month, especially with the first fruit of all my increase. I honor you with the first fruit of all my increase. Father, show me your divine vision for this new year. Kill me of every spiritual blindness, every blindness, physical, spiritual, mental. Lord, show me. Open my mindset up to the mindset of heaven. Help me operate the kingdom mindset. Keep me. Ah, yeah, the divine vision for this year. Cure me of every spiritual blindness, physical blindness, mental blindness. Lord, inspire my vision for the year 2023. The Bible said there's a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. Give me understanding by this spirit. I receive the grace to prioritize and strategize with the heavenly vision. I will run with your heavenly vision part time. I will not run with my own. I will run with your own. I will not stumble in Jesus' name. Lord, grant me the grace to seek you first every single day of this year. Grant me the grace to seek you first every single day of this year. I choose to put you first in everything, in everything, in everything. I choose to put you first in everything I do. Let the law of preeminence work for me. Let the law of prominence, the law of preeminence, as I give you glory, as say, like it, hey, do you know that as you lift God up, he will lift you up. As you praise him, he will raise you. As you honor him, he will honor you. That is the precept of the law of preeminence. When you say, God, you are first, you say, yes, this one cannot be last. <laughs> when you say, God, you are first, you say, this one must be first among his equal. I want you to say, Lord, grant me the grace to seek you first every single day of this year. Grant me the grace to put you first in everything I do. Let the law of preeminence work for me. Let me enjoy the opening blessing of this year. Many of us want to enjoy the opening blessing, but we refuse to give him the opening blessing in our hand. He put it in your hand in the first place. The Bible said that there's nothing we have that we have not received. <laughs> we received it from him. Come on, give him praise this morning. I say, Father, I thank you for what you have blessed me, but I give it back to you. Let me enjoy the opening blessing of this year in Jesus' name. My entire household will enjoy the lion's share of this uh, of this year. We will not eat leftovers. None of us want to eat leftover. So why do we give God leftover? Say, Lord, my household will enjoy the lion's share of this year as we operate the law of preeminence. We will not eat leftover in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I activate the breakers anointing for common breakthrough this year. In the name of Jesus. You want to break through, say, Lord, give me the breakers anointing. The breakers anointing is the one that breaks the status quo. The breakers anointing is the one that's able to do what others could not do in your forefathers among your ancestors. The breakers anointing is the ability to excel where there's racial discrimination and repression. The breakers anointing is the ability to break ground, to break through, to do new businesses, to do the impossible in the midst of the possibility. Oh, Ziba Kataliaba, I want you to ask for the breakers anointing. A Ziba Kata for uncommon breakthrough. Ah, Lord, I received the grace of a doer, the anointing of a completer. This year, I achieve all my tasks supernaturally. I declare that only the plans and purpose of God prevails over my life. God's word finds speedy fulfillment in my life. My vision will not terminate prematurely. My vision will not be digressed or diverted or truncated. I will not give up before my testimonies manifest in full. This year, I will not give up. This year, I will not give up. My testimony manifests in full. I declare <clears throat> that as I operate the law of preeminence this year, everything I lay my hands to do shall prosper. Everything I lay my hands to do shall prosper. I will not be slothful in business, but I'll be fervent in spirit serving the Lord. I will run my vision with all spiritual might. All that I set out to do will be completed in Jesus' mighty name. I cross every stumbling block, every demonic time waster. I command them to get out of my way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are going to prophesy. <clears throat> I prophesy that double doors open before me. 
as I advance with my heavenly mandate, <laughs> as I advance with my kingdom vision this year, I enjoy supernatural intelligence. I enjoy divine inspiration, wisdom, knowledge, strategies, and ideas. My, my destiny in Christ will not be altered. I walk in exploit from January to December. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy double doors open before me. According to Isaiah 45 verse 1, I declare double doors, the gates, they open before me as I advance with my kingdom vision. I enjoy supernatural intelligence, divine inspiration, wisdom, knowledge, strategies, ideas. My, my destiny in Christ will not be altered. I walk into exploits. I walk in divine exploits from January to December. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm returning with my 12 stones. I'm returning with my 24 memorial stones. 12 of them prayers, 12 of them my goals. I'm returning with my in 12 months with my tangible testimonies, the tangible testimonies of God's goodness. This year, my vision will get brighter and brighter according to Proverbs 4, 18. I gain clarity, uh, mastery as my vision aligns with heavenly vision. <laughs> I will not be slowed down. I will not be distracted in Jesus' name. My kingdom vision prevails over every limitation. The counsel of the Lord for my life prevails over every wicked counsel. My godly dream prevails over every evil water. I said my godly dream will not be diverted. My divine agenda from heaven's mandates will not be truncated. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want you to declare this morning, as we are not ourselves, you are, going to, you are going to say, the prophetic instruction is that you find the scriptures to back up your memorial stones. Declare the scriptures over your life, over your family, and the work of your hands. For the next seven days, you remember today is day one of that seven days. Anoint yourself, your spouse, your children, consecrating all you have with it. You will then take an old bottle of anointing oil left over from previous the previous year or previous years and use it to anoint the threshold. I hope you are paying attention. So you will go around about your house and you will anoint everywhere. You draw the bloodline. You decree the word of God. Draw the seal the premises of your home with a line of the oil throughout the building. If your house is co-joined to another, start from where your premises, your own boundary starts and end where it ends. Surround it with oil, the old oil, and then the new oil. <laughs> you are going to make sure you are going to make sure you use the old oil to mark the perimeters of your home. But speak to the new oil, anointing yourself daily for the next seven days. On the seventh day, anoint your household again. Today, you will anoint your household, yourself and your entire household. And then on the seventh day, you will do the same. Next week, there's a special instruction. Bring something that represents, you know, a negative verdict, uh, an expectation. If it's marriage you are looking for, if it's solution, if the, there's a doctor's report, a doctor's report concerning your child, and you want instantaneous miracle, bring it on the seventh day. We are going to be anointing everything. And I declare that the God who answers prayer, the one that dwells above the cherubim, it will show up on our altar. And so I want you to speak to your all for the next seven days. Speaking scriptures that you crafted for your memorial stone. Speaking it every day. And then use the oil to anoint yourself. Today you anoint your right ear, your right thumb, and the big toe of your foot according to Leviticus chapter 14, verse 14 to 16. So I want you to take the oil. Take the oil, anoint yourself. Take the oil, the new oil. Not the old oil. Take the new oil. Anoint yourself, your right ear according to scripture. Leviticus 14, 14 to 18, the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and the priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is cleansed on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of the right foot. So you are going to take off your shoe or your socks. Hopefully you are not driving, but whenever you get to your destination, take the oil and anoint your right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it on the palm of his left hand. Pour it on the palm of your left hand. We are following scriptures here. Leviticus chapter 14, verse 14 to 18. Go and read it in your own spare time. Leviticus 14, 14 to 18. You will pour it in your left hand. And then you shall sprinkle some of the oil with your five, your, your, with your finger seven times before the Lord. So you will sprinkle this oil. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three, four, five, six. And seven, you will do the same for your children. You will do the same for your spouse. Whether you're a man, you do it for your wife. If you're a woman, you, you do it with your husband. Explain what you are doing so that <laughs> they can understand from scripture what we are doing. Anoint your right ear, your right thumb, and your big toe on your right foot. That's what the scripture says. We are obeying scriptures now. The rest of the oil you put in, 
or in the priest and you put it on the head of him who is cleansed. So you are going to anoint your head with oil. Anoint your head with oil. Anoint your head with oil. And you are going to proclaim. So let's go. Prayer number 9B. By this oil, purge me of every contamination of the spirit and of the flesh. Deliver me from every evil altar. From this oil, you have anointed yourself but say, Lord, purge me from every contamination of the spirit and of the flesh. Deliver me from every baggage. Deliver me. I want you to declare from the new oil, purge me from the contamination of the spirit and of the flesh. Deliver me from all evil altered and evil, evil dedication, every desecration. Let the intensity of your fire burn off every defilement from ancient altars and modern altars. I'm released from every evil association, addiction, and worldly snares. I'm released from every infirmity, every chain and stronghold. Come on, declare. I want you to declare, Lord, let the scales fall off my eyes. Take the oil, put a little on your eyelid. Don't put too much oil because some oils have spices. Say, Lord, let the scales fall off my eyes. Anoint your eyes. The Bible says, anoint your eyes with eyes out. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17. That you may see. Say, Lord, anoint my eyes. Let the scales fall off my eyes. Uh, clothe me with the robe of righteousness. Instruct me with the secret keys of the kingdom for strange and exploit in 2023. Let me run with the audacity of Joshua as this oil touches my head. Let this oil release the power and authority locked within my spirit man. Let this oil touch. Let this oil touch every area of my life. Let this new oil touch every area of my life. Our prayer number 11, anointing your head with oil. Take the oil one more time. Anoint your head with oil. Say from this altar of deliverance, consecrate me as a priest of the Most High God. You can see in Leviticus 14, 14 to 18, how the priests are consecrated. The priest consecrated for them, he consecrate the, the members of the congregation of Israel. Everyone who comes for atonement, we have come for a reset button this morning. I want you to take the oil and put it on your head. I said from this altar of the consecration, this altar of deliverance, Lord, consecrate me as a priest, as a New Testament priest. I possess my vessel in sanctification and honor to serve you as my Lord forever. I declare that my oil will not be wasted. My power will not be dissipated through anger or pride. I declare that I'm a vessel of honor, sanctified and made for the master's use in this generation, in Jesus' mighty name. You are going to repeat the each for your household members. After this prayer, please go back and anoint, especially those in the United States of America. You know you have this day off. Don't just go back to sleep. Anoint your children. Make sure you set something on your alarm. Anoint your children. Pray for them. Anoint every corner of your home. It's an instruction. And those who are not on holiday, when you get back from work, make sure you follow this precept, follow this instruction. Anoint every member of your household. Anoint your children. Anoint and consecrate every part of your house. And take the old oil. Use it to seal the premises of your house. Empty everything in the old oil so that you will take out the old to bring in the new. You begin to see newness on every side in Jesus' name. You are going to pray by this soil. Refine me by your holy fire. Take away my character flow. Mention the specific area you need a change. Say, Lord, take away anger. Take away pride. Take away sin. Inordinate affection. Addiction to pornography. Internet sin. Ah, Father, Lord, whatever my eyes have seen, cleanse my eyes. Lord, let the nature of Christ be formed in me. Let it transform me from within. Let me develop in character. So I release the sweetness from your altar. And be me with the fire that consumes sickness and destroys demonic yoke of affliction. Ah, Father, cleanse me from every abuse of substance. Ribas, filekita, liaba, salakita. And if you have any loved one, is addicted to any form of thing. Just decree it and declare a release in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to pray and say, by this new oil, I operate the anointing of ease. This oil speaks for me in strained quarters and unlock for me strained doors. I'm now celebrated and accepted wherever I was once rejected. I command blessing in a place of curses. I enjoy divine opportunities and favor on all sides. I will no longer express hardship or misfortune. I silence every voice of adversity according to Psalm 105 verse 15. See, the Bible said, talk no man, no do my prophet no harm. He said they went from nation to nation. He said he suffered no man to do them wrong. Saying, talk no man, no do my prophet no harm. I'm unmolestable because of this oil. In the name of Jesus, I'm untouchable by the kingdom of darkness because of this oil. The Bible said, talk no man, no do my prophet no harm. The oil of the Lord falls my race as I gain uncommon speed in life. I will not be burnt out in Jesus' name because of this oil. I will not be burnt out in Jesus' name. Don't you notice that he opened our ears when we anointed our right ear? He's empowering the work of our hands when we, uh, when we anointed our thumb. 
is is altering our feet into greatness when we anointed our our big toe is a symbolism of god offering us with precision nothing is done abstractly in scripture there's a reason for it i want you to pray as i pray intensely in the spirit power is activated in me the bible says there's a power at work in us in Ephesians 3 20. he said not who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that could ever ask or imagine according to the power at work in us this power is activated today by this earth Say, Lord, as I pray intensely in the spirit, power is activated in me. So in the next seven days, starting with today, you must be observing the what is praying in tongues and decree the scriptures and confirming everything written in your memorial stone. Say, Lord, this will fuels the fire within me. This anointing flows through my spirit, soul, and body. I'm strengthened for uncommon exploit this year. I gain uncommon speed. I accomplish the impossible this year. By this oil, I accomplish the impossible. By this oil of prominence, I enjoy distinction among my peers. Because the Lord is the glory and the lift up on my head. Therefore, my horn is exalted like the horn of the unicorn. I'm anointed with fresh oil. I'm enveloped with the favor of the king of glory. I'm anointed with the spirit of excellence. Come on, declare the one that grants spiritual mental and economic power is my lord in jesus mighty name i'm anointed with the spirit of the one that grants spiritual mental and economic power in jesus mighty name our prayer number 15 like the woman with the oil in the book of second kings chapter four our lord grant me prophetic instruction that we keep my oil flowing for generations to come you see that she what she got the prophetic instruction from prophet elisha and this woman's oil continued to flow she became an oil merchant i want you to pray she was able to pay off her debt and she was able to rescue her children from enslavement i want you to declare like this oil local grant me prophetic instruction that we keep my oil flowing for generations to come I tap into financial breakthroughs and debt cancellation. I tap into financial breakthroughs and debt cancellation. I reign as royalty. I become a key player in my generation. I rule with this oil of prominence, the oil of preeminence, and the spirit of excellence. This new anointing showcases my talent. This new anointing showcases my creative ideas, my creative gifting. Every word spoken concerning me comes to pass in a hurry. Every word concerning me comes to pass in a hurry. Father Lord, anoint me afresh with the oil that turns bitterness to sweetness. Infuse me with the power that dispatches yokes and destroy everybody. Immerse me in the fragrance of your presence from today. Let my life bring you pleasure daily in Jesus' name. Let this oil mark everyone in the immortal. As the executors and possessors of the new covenant, let this oil mark every one of us here. Let this oil activate every written vision on our memorial stone. Let this oil activate the written vision in our memorial stone in jesus mighty name ah by this anointing of fire we overturn territorial stronghold as a ministry we shatter communal powers that trade with the souls of men we defy the strong man of limitation working against our race we denounce the dark covenant holding back our generation we release men and women old and young from the stronghold of darkness to serve the king of kings in our communities in our families in our neighborhoods in our nation in the name of jesus Italia, by this anointing of fire, we overturn the mountains in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our prayer number 17. You are going to say, Lord, raise solution carrier from this altar today in the Imato prayer ministry. Raise solution givers. Raise, oh Lord, Father, solution carriers. A river select Italia, global change agencies from this altar in the Imato prayer ministry. Release people into their destinies. Let the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the evangelists, teachers, elves, administrations arise. Let doctors, lawyers, business magnates, educators, brothers of nations arise, fathers of nations, intercessors by this oil. Let the oil release the power Oh, Rima Silekia, the concept, the ideas, the ability we carry. Let the intercessors arise. Let the intercessors be activated. The realtors, the investors, the authors uh, release jobs, uh, scholarships, admissions, residency programs, uh, both certification for all professionals by reason of this world. Empower us for kingdom exploit. Father Lord, empower us in the marketplace, empower us in the church, empower us in the nation, empower us as political leaders, empower also God. Azima Silekita Liababa, our Father, in all our future of endeavor. Empower us for kingdom exploits in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for a righteous decrees. You are going to say 2023, I call you forth. 2023, I call you forth. Your days, 
your week, your month will serve God's purpose in my life. 2023, I call you forth. I declare that my past shines brighter and brighter. My vision gets clearer and clearer by the day. My vision will not grow dim. <laughs> my strength will not diminish in Jesus' mighty name. By this new anointing, by this new anointing, I'm marvelously helped in 2023. Ah, first John 2 20 says, I have an anointing, an unction from the Holy One, and I know all things. By this new anointing, I know all things. I know all things by reason of this new oil. I want you to declare by by reason of this oil, I know all things. Sir. I understand mysteries by this new anointing. I enjoy supernatural intelligence this week, this month, and throughout this year because of this fresh oil. I hear God clearly because my spirit man is alive to him. My ears are trained to hear the Lord's audible voice by this new oil. I operate by divine intel. I operate by divine intel. Isaiah 30, 21 said the word of God. The, the, the word of God says your, your ear will hear a voice behind your ear saying this is the way. Walk you in this. When Whenever you turn to the right or whenever you turn to the left, my ear will hear the voice of God. My vision testifies of Jesus and glorifies the Lord. According to John 15, 26, I have the hearing ear and the seeing eyes. According to Proverbs 20, 12, my spirit man was hardwired to hear from God. And so I hear God. My spirit is God's lamp. According to Proverbs 20, 27, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord, is, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, setting all the inward part of the belly. I hear hear God clearly this year. He's been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Therefore, I see as God sees and perceive things as the whole, by the Holy Spirit. My spiritual faculties are activated by this new oil. I want you to take the oil, anointing your eyes, anointing your ears. One more time. Anointing your eyes, anointing your ears, anoint your nose, your nostrils, anoint your nose. And if you can reach your heart, anoint your heart. I say my spiritual faculties are activated by this new oil. I hear clearly, I understand deep mysteries. My visions are excited. My dreams are sweet. When we anointed our head, we have anointed our brain, our mind, our, our mind box, the resource of the spirits. We are able to dream sweet dreams, prophetic dreams because of this new oil. I want you to declare my imagination is blessed and I enjoy an unending flow of divine information, unending flow of divine information. By this fresh oil, my heart is full of joy, joy unspeakable, and my ears are keen to hear the voice of the Father. My eyes see into the portals of glory. I enjoy angelic attention. I enjoy angelic attention. I declare that somebody's prayer portal is about to open like that of Cornelius. You will see into the realm of the spirit like Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah and the prophets of old in Jesus' name. I want you to declare the details of my vision align with the heavenly agenda for my life. The details of my vision align with the heavenly mandate. I gain supernatural preeminence as I give God preeminence every day of this month and every day of this year and for the rest of my life. I call forth angelic assistance as I fulfill my heavenly mandate this year. I call forth everything needed to fulfill my heavenly vision in 2023. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's give thanks to God for answer prayer. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for this anointing service, the anointing of exploit, the anointing of breakthrough, the, anoint the breakers anointing, the anointing of ease. Father, we exalt your name for the anointing of ease. Mazile Kitali, Abazule Kita, Orima Sule Kitali, Yama Baba Baba Baba. Thank you, Almighty God. Ezi masuli katile gidari mosutali abasule kita era bagita li abazule kita li ababababa ori mosule kita li ababababa. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we bless you. We worship you because we are placed with newness, prophetic newness. We take out the old and we bring in the new. For those who don't have old oil, I encourage you. You can buy two bottles of oil just so that you can anoint your threshold. So you don't have old oil. You don't have any oil in your house. Just take another bottle of oil if you can afford it or split your big bottle of oil into two and anoint your threshold. Because I saw someone asking that question. Anoint your threshold, seal every part of your perimeter, the perimeter of your house with the oil. So if you have old oil, it's just, to, it's just significant of throwing out the old to bring in the new. But if you don't have any, just take what you have, split it to two and anoint the threshold. Make sure you go around. You need a big bottle to be able to anoint your threshold. I don't think the house is small. And if you live in an apartment, mm, yes, it's on YouTube. You will get the prayer on YouTube. The slides are uh, on YouTube. If, if, you, if you live in an apartment complex, you may not be able to do it around your apartment, um, your, your, uh, your own flat, but you may be able to do it around the building. Just operate with wisdom. 
do as God leads you. And if you do, if you do not have power over the complex, then maybe just anoint portions of your house. Amen. Because I know that we have different living uh, quarters and arrangements. But if you can anoint the whole building, then you have consecrated the whole building. You, everybody enjoys consecration because of you. And so if you want this prayer point, it, the slides are made available on YouTube and you will find all the prayers there. Amen. Let's give thanks to God for answered prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this newness. We give you praise God's testimonies about. Don't forget to declare scriptures. Don't forget to anoint your children. Don't forget to anoint your house. Don't forget to anoint yourself daily for the next seven days. On the seven day next week, bring something to represent the miracle you are looking for. And I believe that miracles will be popping on this altar with angelic activities in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Monday through Saturday, Watchman arrives. We had our first Saturday meeting last week um, and it was powerful. I pray for increased strength and vigor as we continue to watch before the Lord. Please make sure you obey because you never know when a miracle will happen. Amen. So Saturday prayers, Monday through Saturday, watchman arise. Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, we're interceding for nation and reading from the Bible. On Monday, righteous decree like we did. Today is a special service. Please pardon us for going over time, really over time. We'll make sure we keep it brief from uh, from next week by the grace of God. You can call me. <laughs> you can call me out if it goes past seven o'clock. Amen. And then marriage war room every Wednesday and destiny altar every Friday. Our weekly prayer on Instagram resumed this week on the streets of Instagram. Support us, join us, come and pray for Nigeria. We have over 200 million Nigerians at home and so many more abroad. And so there's no reason why we should be very few when we are praying on Thursday. I want to see everybody that can show up, show up as we pray for Nigeria, especially as we approach the upcoming presidential election in February. The Lord's will be done over Nigeria in Jesus' mighty name. And if you want to contact us receiving daily ministry updates, please send a text message on WhatsApp to 6309368868, or you can email us at neymatrup at gmail.com by sending your feedback, testimony, or prayer requests. We look forward to hearing from you. If you want to partner with us as a ministry, you can Zell or PayPal neymatrup at gmail and the GTP account is uh, displayed on the screen. You can screenshot this for your later use. Um, also, if you want to send your first fruit to Neymar Troop, you can also use the same account, GT in Nigeria, PayPal or Zell Neymar Troop at gmail.com. Let's share the Neymar Troop benediction. I hope you have been blessed this morning. I know we had to rush because of time. You can go back over. The recording is on SoundCloud and then the slides are displayed on YouTube. You can pause at any time to take it all in. Let's share the Neymar Troop benediction together. I am blessed with the blessing of the Father God Almighty. I am blessed with the blessing of heaven above in Christ Jesus. I am blessed with the blessing of the field. I am blessed with the blessing of the deep within. I am blessed with the blessing of the breast. I am blessed with the blessing of the womb. I am blessed with all spiritual, material, and marital blessings this season. I am blessed when I go out and when I come in. My blessing exceeds that of my ancestors and all those who have gone ahead of me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow as we continue on this altar of prayer at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye for now.